And if you're a Muslim here today, I hope that you have heard in me not someone who's trying to win a debate, not someone who's just trying to make debate points. I raise these issues because they are the very essence of what separates us. And if we are going to communicate with one another, we need to know and understand what each other believes. And I believe the Christian message that Jesus Christ truly is the Son of God and that his life was not taken from him involuntarily. He gave his life voluntarily upon the cross of Calvary. And that it is by faith and repentance toward him that we have eternal life. And that he was not just the Jewish Messiah. Instead, he sent his believers out into all the world to proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord and that by repentance and faith in him, we can have the forgiveness of our sins. Now, you all know of a certain hadith. I think it's a Mutawatir hadith. I, I think it is. I could be wrong that this one is, but it's a very properly well-known hadith about a Jewish man that had killed 99 people. And he went to a priest and asked, uh, will God accept my repentance? And the priest said no, so he killed the priest. Now he's killed 100 people. So he goes to a scholar, and I don't know if the scholar knew about the priest or not, but he asks the scholar, and the scholar says, go to such and such a village, and those people there will tell you what you must do to have your repentance accepted by God. And so as he's going, the time of his death came. And so he falls down the middle of the road, and an angel from the fire and an angel from paradise come, and they argue over his soul. You'd think it'd be a slam dunk for the angel from the fire, but... Actually, the angel in paradise says, well, he was going to find out about repentance. And so Allah decrees that if he's one cubit closer to the city he was going to than the city he was coming from, that he will go to paradise. And then, in some of the stories, he causes the earth to shrink between that man and that city so that he's one cubit closer, and the man who killed 100 people goes to paradise. Now, why do I tell you this story? Because from the Christian perspective, that is not a demonstration of grace. That's not a demonstration of what we believe forgiveness is. Because you see, the holy law of God was left completely unfulfilled. Those hundred people, no justice done. We believe that there is an intimate union and relationship between the holiness of God and his law. His law must be fulfilled. And so how has he done that? In himself. In the divine second person of the Trinity, voluntarily entering into his own creation, voluntarily giving his perfect life because he's the God-man. He's the only one who could do this. The cross was the only place where this could be. And that's why from the biblical perspective, everything before the cross looks forward to it. Everything afterwards looks back to it. It's the, center it's the centerpiece of history itself. And that is the difference that we must understand when it comes to what makes a difference in our lives is that we truly believe that Jesus Christ is the only way of salvation. And I hope today you've heard about him. You at least consider the claims of the people of the book. Thank you for being here today. Thank all of you. I thank all of you for being here today.